Hello everyone. I hope you've had a great weekend and you made good progress on all of your other drawings. Um, I've looked at a few of the ones that have been turned in and y'all are totally doing it perfect. You're seeing exactly what I want you to see. You're capturing that sort of uh, negative space as a positive. So I can tell that most of y'all are totally getting it. The only thing I'm going to say is maybe try a little bit to um, tighten up your compositions. I'm seeing a lot of negative space still. Realize that if, even if you've got a long, narrow object, just come in on the sides and make it a long, narrow composition. But that's something I'll continue to talk to you about throughout the semester is how to just, you know, take away all that extra to really create a dynamic, interesting design. What we're going to do now is we're going to start building on uh, more elaborate ways to make a drawing. Up to this point, it's been strictly about how to see what you're looking at and how to un understand how to draw that. What we're going to do now is I'm going to start introducing um, rules of perspective and some other types of techniques that I want you to start bringing into your drawings, but I don't want you to forget that primarily we are, we are looking at real objects and we're learning how to understand, interpret, and capture those in a drawing. So even though I'm going to start showing you these other techniques, I don't want you to forget that first and foremost, we're always looking at a real object and these new um, Techniques are simply a way to better understand and correct what we're seeing um, on the other objects. So what you're going to do next is you're going to find some sort of an interesting object that's hopefully um, got a cylindrical shape. If you want to do something simple like a jar or a can or whatever, that'll be fine. What I have found, this is a um, ceramic mug a friend of mine made. A friend of mine made. And what I want you to realize, this is a side topic, but I say this to all art majors every time I have y'all in class. Um, the sooner you start appreciating all artwork, other people's work, things that aren't even necessarily considered fine art, but are more of the uh, functional art, it's all the same expression. It's just sometimes we're being, you know, more philosophical, more conceptual, and that puts us into that, you know, far realm of fine art. But something as simple as a, you know, coffee mug can become a very beautiful and um, interesting object. I've got several different um, ceramic mugs and I just always enjoy using them. So that's what I want you to realize is that we all find different roles to play as an artist. Some of us, you know, try to create art for a gallery, hopefully someday a museum. But some people are happy to just make objects that enhance people's lives. And I think that's what a lot of ceramicists do. They make very unique and creative objects. Now, the only difference is we get to use it. Um, I could give you a whole spiel on the, uh, my, my fascination with really good um, fashion design. It gets a little out there. I have to always have like my uh, aesthetic standard that I go by, because if not, I'll get a little bit too out there and I'll buy stuff that I'd be embarrassed to wear in public. But I still appreciate the designs. Um, but that's side topic. All I'm doing is saying that part of your role as an artist is to not only figure out how to do what you're going to do, but learn to appreciate the uniqueness and creativity of other artists and people and other areas of design that are doing the same thing, just in a different application. And ultimately, you learn to appreciate people from all over the world because you start to realize that same human creativity and expression comes out in so many different ways from so many different people. And I think that's one thing I would hope that y'all eventually can do is start to appreciate, you know, all creativity and realize that's one of the things that makes us human. So what we're going to do on this is I'm going to give you an explanation of something that's one of the most basic rules of understanding um, perspective when you're looking at something. And this is going to be it's referred to different things, but I've heard it most often referred to as the rule of the ellipse. As you know, an ellipse is the, the way that a circle changes based on the parameters. So basically what I want you all to know is if we look at a circle straight on, we've got the same height and same width. But as we see that from a different angle, the width will stay the same. But what happens is slowly as we rotate that circle in space, I'm not doing this perfect, but you'll get the idea. The height changes, gets narrower to the width. And the further over that gets, the 
eventually it's flat. So this is kind of like that silly stuff you'll see online of the flat earth. People thinking that the earth is a um, flat disc. What's funny is that it is a circle on, and you know, and as you rotate it circle, it appears to be a flat disc. So this is the rule of the ellipse. It's simply the most basic way of creating that mental understanding of how shapes will change based on the angle that you're viewing them. For a square, what's going to happen is the leading edge is going to stay the same width. But as it rotates, the side edges start to go back and the flatter it gets, the closer it approaches a flat, approaches a flat plane. And the same for every shape. And then it gets complicated if you start getting to like trapezoids and you know, really weird things. But what I want you to realize is that once you understand that when you're looking at something, try to imagine where in that one of these shapes exists. So for example, if I'm drawing this object, if I draw it straight on, I simply see two flat surfaces with that little bit of a curve. And then I'm gonna go ahead and draw the handle in. If y'all pick something without a handle, it'll be easier. So I can give a little bit of width to this. And that's basically what we end up with. Now, the things I want you to realize, we're gonna analyze the shape. I want you to try to draw the shape by defining the um, obvious circles with, that become ellipses, and then go back and just quickly draw in the details. I'm not looking for a perfectly refined drawing. If you wanna do these really careful on at least one or two of the drawings, that'd be really cool. But basically, I just wanna see that you can capture an accurate representation of the perspective. So what I'm doing on this is I'm just looking at the object. And if I was gonna actually keep going, I could add details. So what I want you to realize is this again is just like when we were doing gesture drawings or blind contour. It's a matter of how much detail, how precise do you wanna get. I mean, I could keep looking at this and eventually draw it to where it's almost photorealistic but we're not trying to do that. I'm just gonna show you that the more I look, the more I can get textures and shapes and patterns into it. And I can slowly build it up into a refined, serious drawing. But what I want you to basically do, I want you to do five drawings with some object that's cylindrical, and I want you to do those drawings from five different angles. And I don't mean just like one, two, three, four, five, I mean, Draw one from the side, draw one from maybe straight on on the top. So if I'm gonna draw it from this angle, I'm imagining that picture plane around it, and I'm thinking where, the circle on this one is not rotating up and down anymore, it's rotating side to side. So as I rotate this, I have to think, well, how much is that circle changing? So I'm gonna draw the ellipse on the front, and I'm gonna to try to imagine how much larger is the ellipse in the back, Then I'm going to think, where does that curve go? Where does that? I'm going to hold it like this. That one goes like that. I can see the handle sticking out there a little bit. There's the interior part of the lip, outer part of the lip. The little. So there's two different angles, completely different. This one I'm seeing. Because I'm so close to it, I'm basically just seeing the two flat planes. <coughs> if I set this on a surface, I'm actually seeing the front come out just a little bit. The top is looking perfectly flat, but I'm going to bring that out just a little bit. But that's okay. That's all I want you to do. I want you to practice what you're seeing. Look at it first. Think about how it is. Imagine, you know, if you were going to do the drawings, but then superimpose that understanding of the rule of the ellipse onto what you're seeing and think about, okay, how much of an ellipse is it? You know, as you draw it, think about how far does it rotate and just think about how you can draw in those couple of, those couple of uh, ellipses that suddenly give you a description of the object. And then all you got to do is just add the other definitions of what's going on. One more and then we'll, I'll let y'all go. 
I'm going to turn it. Uh, let me just look down at it. Now it's really tricky. I'm going to just set it down there. So what I'm going to do here is, again, I'm thinking of my picture plane. Just like our other two techniques, if I'm doing a uh, gesture drawing or if I'm doing a blind contour, I'm thinking about how I see those things. But I'm also thinking about, well, as I'm doing those things, I've got the structure of a cylinder to work with. So I'm just going to look here and go, okay, there's the cylinder. It's not, it's not a full circle, but it's a pretty much open ellipse. And then the bottom is a little bigger. This comes down like that. If it has an opening, go ahead and try to show us that interior that kind of goes in a different way. Because that helps us understand outside and inside. Obviously that one wouldn't have it. But that's what I want you to do is just kind of five drawings with some object Whoop, that's over a little further. Let me go ahead and, for fun, just do the uh, handle. And that comes out around there, and that comes up there, and that comes there. And there's a little bit of width on that side, a little width on that side. It's not perfect, but I could easily go back and fix it. But that's basically what I want you to do. If you put it on a surface, this is another thing. I want, anytime you draw something on a surface, I want to see you define the ground plane with two aspects. Um, draw it in. So like this one, I drew it in right there. You can see the, the ground plane, but also think about the ground plane is just like one of these surfaces. You gotta realize that the ground plane is like this. If I imagine a grid on this, how does that grid change as I do this? And as I do this. So this is the same thing. I imagine that there's a implied ground plane just like one of these surfaces. Walls are the same, ceilings are the same. So what I want you to realize, what we're learning in this rule of the ellipse becomes the foundation of understanding um, perspective. Um, we'll get into some of this more, I'll elaborate more as we get into surfaces. But for this, I just want you to understand that this flat ground plane that you're defining ends up being the same thing. And obviously as you go back further, they get thinner. And then as you come closer, they turn into more of a, a square. But I'm not gonna sit there and worry about how perfect. I just want you to draw it so that we get that sense of space that comes from that picture uh, ground plane being implied. This one, I could do it edge of the table, just say is up here somewhere. And then because of that, I'm thinking of what angle is that coming at me? Obviously, you don't have to do your drawings this large. I'm just doing that so you can see it. But that's what I want you to think about. As you're drawing, I want you to think about how the rule of the ellipse applies to drawing the object and how this same rule, if you imagine a flat surface of the ground plane like this, gives you that understanding of perspective. Because I have noticed that um, some of y'all are struggling to get that natural perspective. You're still flattening things out. And I think really thinking about this, you know, what angle are you looking at that ground plane? And if you're looking at, you know, if you're looking down, it starts to look like a flat surface. But if you're looking at it straight on, it becomes, you know, a flat plane, but we're usually seeing somewhere in here. So those are the things I want you to do. These don't have to be, you know, long drawings. Just take a sheet of paper as large as you want or can, and uh, just do your drawings, five of them. One object from five different angles giving us all this different information. Um, I'll add to this on Wednesday, but uh, hope you'll have a great start to your week.